Hey everybody, welcome back to the Chaotic Little Book Corner. My name's Acacia. Today we're going to be doing my second part of my March monthly wrap-up. So this is going to be the final books that I got through in the end of March, or the second half of March. So this month was really rough. Um, I had severe medication withdrawals because I had an issue with that and so I could not read very well um, due to headaches and dizziness and things of that nature. So I feel mm, bugs. All right. So I feel as if it wasn't the most productive reading month, but I'm looking at it and it's not, it's not so bad. Like I feel okay. Um, I had some books that I really loved and I had some books that I, I wish I loved. I really wanted to, but I, I did not love them did not love them at all. So let's just jump right in, shall we? So Amanda, my book angel, sent me The Butcher's Hook by Jeanette Ellis, and I believe that Jen has said more than enough wonderful things about this. I'm not going to be doing a full end of review unless you request it. I have a few thoughts that differ from Jen, but mine are more based on the fact that there is a sexual misconduct moment in this, and I feel like it kind of shaped... The main character a little bit more than was stated but i could be wrong i don't know that's just me so i gave this book five out of five stars i thought it was absolutely phenomenal it was a little dark and morbid and twisted or if you liked the dumb house or crimson petal in the white i think you'll like this definitely a good one next we have this one this was a I believe four star read for me um this is the People Who Watched Her Pass By by Scott Branfield, and this was sent to me by $2 Radio Press. I I ordered it, I asked them for it, like requested it randomly, and I was expecting nothing because I hadn't heard from them, and it showed up randomly, so that was a really great surprise. And I will be doing a full in-depth review about this. This is the story of a little girl who gets kidnapped and then gets handed off from one person to the next throughout her life and things get really weird and then she kind of figures out her own strength and it was really beautifully done and really wonderfully done but there's definitely some darker twisted elements to it that I thoroughly enjoyed. This is The Beauty. This is a graphic novel talking about in a, it takes place in a world where the there's a new STD that's sweeping the nation and this book talks about the STD, the beauty, and the beauty is when you get the sexually transmitted disease, you become one of the most beautiful people in the world. Some people have an immunity to it, some people just become absolutely stunning, so it becomes a world between people that are absolutely beautiful and people that are just normal. And it's very interesting to see the dynamics, but there's a twist to what the STD causes in the long run that you have to decide if it's worth it or not. I gave it three stars. It was a 3.5 reading for me. Four. I keep going back and forth between the two. So I think it's a 3.5 reading. But the the art on the front was stunning and that's why I picked it up. But the inside art was just not what I wanted it to be. It didn't hold up to the front cover. Next, this was a five star amazing read for me. So... Everyone was out of town in my family, so I had a lot of time on my hands this week to read. And I read this, and this is the fairy tale for wild girls, and oh my god, why didn't I have this in my life before? This is Elise Nair. I saw this on Mercedes Channel and picked it up, and I cannot believe that I waited so long to read it. It was beautiful and differently written, and it had some really weird little nods to literature and fairy tales, and it was totally warped. And the first sentence, like, I was, so I was sitting with my, with my sister, and we were chatting, and she was like, well, what are you going to read next? And I was like, I don't know. So I grabbed this, and I picked it up. And I read the first sentence. Once upon a time, Asa Wilde was watching late night television with her eldest brother, Alejandro, when Channel 12 broadcast a lied suicide. I was like, what? Okay. Yes. I will be doing a full review on that one because I loved it so much. This one I did a buddy re read with, with Grace. I'll link her channel down below. This is Silver Linings Playbook. And this is a novel by Matthew Quick. This was my first Matthew Quick book. Um, oh my gosh, it was really beautifully written, really wonderful. I enjoyed it immensely. It talks really well about what it feels like to be the person with mental illness and how draining and embarrassing it can be to feel like you are actually harming your family. 
the romance was good, but it didn't pretend to change or solve the problem of the mental illness. I really enjoyed it. And um, I've now watched the film as well. So I will either be doing a full in-depth review of the book, talking about the mental illness aspect, or a movie and book comparison, whichever you guys request down below. Next, I read Abby Gina's short story collection, The Last Animal. This was a five-star read. Not for the same reasons that um, Abby Gina's first book was a five-star read for me. I read last month The Light Keepers, and that was a five-star read, and it's right now my number one book of 2016, so I'm obsessed with that. But this this was good. I did enjoy it. I liked every story in it. Five-star read, emotions based around animals. It was really stunning, but I feel like everyone's kind of talked this one to death. It was totally worth the read, totally worth the hype. I highly suggest you pick it up. We have, okay, this is the one I really wanted to like. I was sent this for review by the by the um, author, Luke Smithered. And I went into this with high hopes. Everyone who had talked about it on Goodreads who had gotten copies or anything like that really enjoyed it. And it was a psychological thriller and it seemed dark and melty and like twisty and wonderful and it didn't do what I wanted it to do. I don't know, maybe I was in the wrong mind for it. I don't know. It just, it didn't go where I wanted and in the end I only rated it three stars. Um, I will be writing a review of this for him, for his Amazon account. I don't think I'll be doing a full end of the review of it because I didn't feel, it was so three star, I don't think I have anything to really say about it, if that makes sense, which is a bummer. Next, I read An Invisible Sign of My Own by Amy Bender. This one was a four-star read for me. I really enjoyed it. I liked a particular, a peculiar sadness of lemon cake more, but this one was really wonderful. It talks about a young girl with OCD, which she has this obsession with numbers, and I really loved it, and it was quirky and fun and easy, and Amy Bender is just absolutely one of my all-time favorite authors now. I will definitely be picking up more books from her, and I do believe that Mercedes did a full in-depth review of this book, so I will link that down. I'm sorry if I'm not, like, looking directly at you guys. I don't know what's going on with me right now. Then I was sent this for review by Queer... Quirk... Quirkus Books. This is The Chimes. This is an advanced reader copy from them. I really enjoyed this. This was a four-star read for me. This was a dystopian world, and this was nominated for the Man Booker Prize last year and this is about a dystopian world where they are run by music. I thought it was wonderful. I will be doing a full in-depth review on this once I get my brain around it but definitely really enjoyed that. This is The Elegance of Hedgehogs. This is a Europa publishing book. I will be doing a full I will be doing a quadruple review of this and three other books very soon for Europa Publishings. I'm on the third book of the four that they sent me. So I'm pretty happy. This one was really wonderful. It's about a young woman. It's about a woman who's in her middle age years and she's feeling very old and she makes friends with a young girl who has the same, who shares an interest in Japanese culture with her, but the young girl is contemplating suicide. So the two of them end up making a relationship and it's really talking about what life is and what's worth it and what it feels like to be in a little bit of an outcast and weird society and that kind of thing. So I, I super enjoyed it and I really loved it. So there's that. There you have it guys. That is my wrap up for March. This is the second part of two. I will link part number one down below for the first half of the month and I will see you guys on my next video. Bye.